like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll should buffet though trials should come let this last assurance control that Christ Genesis and the book of Psalms.
Could you say that is true? <laughs> it is well. I am not positive, but if I remember right, the man that wrote that song wrote the song after he had lost, I believe it was three daughters, I may be wrong, his wife, uh, ship went down at sea, and the man wrote that song, It's Well With My Soul. Uh, think about that. Think about it. This morning I want us to look in Genesis chapter 1 for just a moment. As we're looking into the word this morning, the title of my message is a question. Who are we? Who are we? Ask yourself the question. Who am I? Who are we? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us. Make man in our image. Go down to verse 27. So God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. If you will, sometime today, I want you to take those verses right there and just go over them, over them a few times in your mind. A lot of the things that we hear today, the answer is found there. It says that God created man in his own image. He created him male and female. And then he created them. The Bible says that they might be fruitful and multiply. Now as you're reading those three verses today, I just want you to think about that. You know if if we didn't God didn't do things his way, you and I wouldn't be here today. Think about it. But that's not where I'm preaching at. Today there are better than seven billion people. In fact, I believe they say now we're right close 8 billion people on the face of the earth. It is said, and I, I don't know where they really come up with this, but it is said that only 10% of the people in this world are born again, well, they say that are Christians, and that takes in uh, a whole lot of area, if you will. Out of those 7 billion people, there are all kind of people, red and yellow, black and white, 
in our day purple and pink and blue, at least the hair that we find. They're all kind. There are people with all kind of sicknesses, all kind of diseases. And again, it would do you and I good to open our eyes and realize how many folks there are that are sick, how many folks there are that was not able to get up this morning as you and I. All kind. But one thing about all of the people is that they're sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But who are we? Who are we? How many of y'all looked in the mirror today? Or a few, a few of them is afraid to do it. I didn't. I was afraid it'd break. Only got one mirror. I've got a mirror in the house. How many of y'all remember the old Holiday Inn that used to be here in town? When it was starting to go out, uh, I walked through there to see if there's any things we could use around church. And I bought a few things out of there. And one I bought at the house is a mirror that we've got hanging there. And it's not too sturdy, so I'm kind of afraid to look in it this morning. Afraid of my breaking. But you know, we we can see what we are, and we see sometimes what we see we don't like, or at least part of us, few of us. But we see all kinds. But you know, we can't see beyond the skin. I believe the way Michael used to say it was that beauty, be, uh, beauty is skin deep, but uh, sin goes all the way through or, or something. I may be getting it off a little bit. But when we look in the mirror, all we see is the outside. But we're thinking who we are. I want you to just consider a few things. Who are we? We are someone who was wondrously made. Someone who was wonderfully. God made us. In Psalm 139 and verse number 14, Psalm 139, verse 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Think about that. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy word and that my soul knoweth right well. Who are we? Who are you? Who am I? We're someone that God made wonderfully. There was a man by the name of A.C. Guyton, who years ago was the head of the medical school in the University of Mississippi. And he said, he said the human body is the most beautifully engineered and the most complicated system that there is. He said it works by means of several hundred patterns of control and each affecting the other. He said a complete understanding of it can hardly be gained without the help of computers with their ability to handle vast amounts of data. He said, for instance, the brain has 10 billion 
nerve cells to record what you learn. The information travels up to 300 miles per hour over a network of nerve fibers a thousand, hundred thousand miles long. And said there are more interconnections in your nervous system than there are street corners in the entire world. He says your brain, which weighs less than four pounds. I wonder about some people. <laughs> but your brain, which weighs less than four pounds, can do things that cannot be done by all of the world's computers. The biochemists say that utilizing the most up-to-date equipment, the typical protein must be boiled for at least 24 hours in a chemical solution to be thoroughly broken down. But the chemical plant of your body completes the identical job in only four hours and without high temperatures at all. He said a piece of skin the size of a postage stamp has four yards of nerves. He said in all there are millions of these nerve endings fanning through your skin and each of them especially constructed to deliver only one type of message. Heat, cold, pain, or pressure. He said in the body, each day your blood travels about 168 million miles. No wonder we're tired at night. And he said that's equivalent of 6,720 times around the world that your blood travels. You think about what he said. Then you think about what the psalmist said. David said, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You and I may not like how we look. You may not like how tall you are, how short you are, how thin you are, or how much like me you are. We might not like all of those things. But my friend, you are wonderfully made. You are something. You are something. Someone wrote, by God's wise designing, we are wonderfully made, every part essential, and in perfect balance laid. We're wonderfully made. My wife and I was watching something a while back, and it's a farmer. A farmer. You know, they do all kinds of work. But this man has no arms. No arms whatsoever. He does everything on the farm. He does it all. We watched that. And we just simply said, my, I thank God for the arms I've got. May not have the strength they once had, but thank God 
I can take a spoon and put cornbread and beans in my mouth. But you know, when that man does it, he has to put a spoon between his toes, using his other foot to put the spoon in the toe. In order to bring him up, and feed himself. We're wonderfully made. Who are you? You're someone that is special. And by the way, out of those 8 billion people, there's no two alike. No two alike. Who are we? Who are you? We are all the children of of a fallen race. Sinful people. Sinful people. There in the garden, man sinned, Adam sinned. And the Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We are all, we're all children of a sinful race. Job said, we're born dying. <laughs> we're born dying. From the moment you're born, Every second, you're a second closer to death. Why? Because of sin. And sin's a mighty terrible thing. We find that sin is what took man out of the presence of God. Adam, where art thou? Sin had separated Sin is what brought pain, guilt, temptation to the fallen race. Had man not sinned, there would never have been pain, but man sinned. Who are you? You're a member of that race. You remember that race that has been separated from God. Genesis 3, 23, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Because of sin, separated. Separated. Who are we? We are someone who can be wonderfully saved. Now, we were wonderfully made, and we can be wonderfully saved. The song said, saved by his power divine, saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete, for I am saved, saved, saved. Folks, we are saved by God's own Son, what he did for us at Calvary. There at Calvary, Jesus Christ, he who knew no sin became sin. For you and I. There he laid down his life on that cross. Nailed to that cross. See him as the blood drops. Flow. From his body. As that flood or blood drops out. He becomes weaker. And weaker till finally 
Jesus died. Suffered pain and agony. And he did it for me. He did it for you. But my friend, when that blood, that last drop of blood, had flowed from the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, that blood was where the power to save come from. We sang the song, there's power, power, power in the blood of the Lamb. Who are you, Christian? You're the one that has been wonderfully saved, saved by the blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. We're not only saved by the blood, we're saved by the grace of God. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Saved, saved by his blood, saved by his grace. My friend, God made us perfect, but sin took that perfection away, took us away from God. And my friend, being sinners, nary a one of us deserve to be saved. But God, God's riches at Christ's expense, he saves us. Not because we deserve it, but my friend, we're wonderfully saved by the love of God. For God so loved. For God so loved you. Look in the mirror. For God so loved you. that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wonderfully saved. My friend, that's the love. That's the love. Songwriters said, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the waters lifted me, now safe in mine. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling. In his blessed, blessed presence live, Ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to him belong. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry ways. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be. Be saved today. <laughs> Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. You're here today and you're saved. You have been wonderfully saved. Don't deserve it. I'll tell you what, I'm sure thankful for it. The love of God. Who am I? Who am I? Well, we are someone who must learn to control ourselves. Let me ask you. Do you, do you, do you do what you want to do 
or what your flesh wants to do. You realize this old thing we see in the mirror is not really us. <laughs> As that's the old house we live in. That's the old flesh. Do you do what you want to do or what the flesh wants to do to control it? Saying yes to the flesh, my friend, is the reason for all the problems in our world today. The reason. Children outside of marriage, broken homes, broken marriages, wars, the mess that our world is in today is all because Man cannot control himself. Cannot control himself. You know, we try to think we've got the answer to every problem. And we can tell everybody else what's right and how to do it. But it's easy to control them. We can control our children. Can almost control our wife. But we can't control ourselves. Can't control ourselves. Now in Christ we can. But ourselves. Who are we? Well, one that must control ourselves. Who are we? Keep this in mind. We are people who one day will face our maker. <laughs> one day we'll face our maker. You see, every person has a God-given soul. And while our bodies will perish, the soul will live on eternally, eternally. The Bible teaches that each one of us will face our maker. As believers, we will face Christ appearing at the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 10, for we must all, Christians talking to believers. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. My friend, one day we'll each stand before God as believers, stand before the Lord. We'll give an account for what we've done since we've been saved. Now, as Christians, we won't stand there at the judgment seat to decide whether or not we're going to heaven or hell. That's already been taken care of at the cross. You accepted Christ, you're his. But my friend, you and I is going to account for what we do. I don't have to account for my wife, my children, you. I've got to give an account for myself. Unbelievers, you want to stand before God at the great white throne judgment. And there to be rejected. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter number 20, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. 
Who are we? We're going to stand before God, each one of us. Be no excuses. As Christians, we say, well, I would have done, but. You see, God sees and knows the truth. Unsaved friend, there's no excuse that God will accept. If you don't get saved before you die, you're going to spend an eternity in a devil's hell. You say, but preacher, I belong to the church and I was baptized 42 times. I did this and I did that. But if your name not written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, depart from me. Who are we? Who are we? Christians, we are God's children. and We are to be serving him as we pass through this world. Serving him. You see, the Bible says right now, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Right now, we have a relationship and a fellowship with God the Father through Jesus Christ in the person of the indwelling Holy Spirit of God. As Christians, as believers, we are to live with eternity in view. So many have lived the last three months with summer in view. I mean, been living just waiting for these hot days to come. I come in here yesterday morning, the thermometer said 55 degrees. I thought, man, that's a little bit cool. So being the cheapskate I am, I said I'll open the doors. I looked a little bit later, and it was 77 degrees in here. I said, man, where's the air conditioner at? We live with our wants in view. But child of God, remember, we need to live our life with eternity in view. What God wants us to do. What God wants us to do. There's a man many years ago lived in Johannesburg, South Africa. This man was literally rich. He owned a, a large textile factory there. He owned Rolls Royce, not one, but he, he owned them, a number of them. He lived in a mansion. He had a staff of servants. He had a 60-foot yacht that he wandered across the Mediterranean Sea. But yet every morning, every morning, five days a week, he would go down in direct traffic at a busy intersection in the city as a policeman. quite unusual for a multi-millionaire. He was moonlighting as a policeman. Child of God, you and I are rich. You are rich. We are rich. And we may be living in a in our lowly surroundings. Yet we are an heir of God. We are heirs to much wealth. Maybe uh, 
a laborer on the street, but you're still a child of the king. You may be a servant or a housekeeper in someone's home, but you're one that still is a possessor of eternal treasures. Whatever that job is you do each day, you're doing it for the king. You're doing it for the Lord. And we must live our life with heaven in view, with Christ in view, and realize that we'll, though we are a child of the king, we're still to serve him down here. The old song says, I once was an outcast, stranger on earth, a sinner by choice and an alien by birth, but I've been adopted, my name's written down, an heir to a mansion, a robe and a crown. I'm a child of the king, a child of the king, with Jesus, my Savior, I'm a child of the King. When you look in that mirror, the next time, Christian, remember that you are seeing a child of God. A child of the King. And if you can't look in that mirror and See a child of the king. You need to get saved today. Because God will save you. To those who believe on his name. To those who gave he power to become the sons of God. You can see a child of God. Don't wait too long. You see, you can be wonderfully saved by all that Christ did for you, his death, burial, and resurrection. That is the gospel. The gospel is the power of God and the salvation to those who believe. Oh, won't you trust him today? What must I do to be saved? Paul, Silas, said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you're without Jesus here, out on the airwaves, I pray that today you would trust him as your own Lord and Savior. Keep in mind that God said he will save you, but he said he would save you today. For today, for this is the day of salvation. He made you no promises about saving you tomorrow. Today. Will you trust him? You saved person, Christians realize that you are a child of God. And we're to be serving him on earth until he calls us home to heaven. And no matter what your work is, no matter what it is, do it for the king. Do it for the king. You work in a plant, you be the best worker. If you work in the glass anchor hawking, couldn't think of the name of it. <laughs> if you work in anchor hawking, you be the best worker there for the Lord. Who am I? Listen, we're the God's children, God's child. 
We need to act like it. We need to act like it. Let your little light shine that men might see your good works and see your heavenly Father. We ought to be bringing glory to God. In all we do. Who are you? Who are you? It is well with my soul. Can we sing that? Truthfully. And when we've come to the last days of life, Knowing we will face Jesus soon, that then we will say, It is well with my soul. Mm. It is well with my soul. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. As we stand, the pianist comes. Without Jesus, I plead with you, come to him. Don't go another day. Unsaved friend, trust the Lord today. And Christians, believers, we are the children of God. Let's bring glory to him. Though we're rich, heirs of God, let's be faithful down here in what we do, that we're doing it for him. Anything God spoke to you about, you come as our pianist plays. <laughs>